Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. And today, we're going to be talking about the upcoming Caldea Tamlin Cup actual event, which in the JP version of the game was called the Caldea Fairy Night Cup. So that's going to be today's video, and let's get right into it. First off, the thing you need to know, when is this actually coming? Um, that's a very good question, to be honest with you. It's probably coming right when this actually ends, which is November 7th. With the social media campaign ending on like literally right before midnight on the 7th. So then they will likely, once this ends and the Morgan banner is gone, we will enter maintenance and then technically on the 8th it will start. I assume. They haven't announced maintenance yet, but I can only assume that is around what time it's going to be around. I tried waiting as long as I could until they announced something and I figured uh, with me being <laughs> about to be busy in work, I had to release the video now. So there you go. That's as far as the time it is. Uh, it's going to be coming. So sometime November uh, 6th, 7th or 8th, sometime around that. Likely 7th as it looks like right now. Uh, and here's the actual event itself. We can look into it right here. So. This is going to be very interesting. In the, originally, in, on the JP version of the game, it ran from the 9th to the 23rd, which is about two weeks. So this will be the big event in November for us. Um, it's really, it's a little bit weird, but it makes sense. The participation requirements. If you're brand new to the game, all you need to do is clear Fuyuki, and you'll be accessing the free quests and the exhibition quests, which are basically the meat and potatoes of what this actual event is going to be about. And if you want to experience the story about it to figure out what's going on, what's her dealio, you have to have cleared uh, Avalon Le Fay, which is Lost Belt 6, <laughs> which is very far away. If you were to start now, I don't think you would even make it to, maybe, if you're reading all the, maybe if you're skipping the story. Either way, it's very hard to make it. It's a long ass story. Um, but those are the requirements. So at least if you haven't beaten Avalon Le Fay, you'll be able to participate in the event itself. And in terms of what you need to know, the new inf the new servant that's going to be added to the game, which is a limited servant, is a Brittle Mart. Um, which you can see plastered everywhere here. And the event itself is a lotto type fest, um, or I guess a Nero fest. Someone pointed. I, I feel weird calling these type of things Nero fests, just because it feels out of season for it. But I guess because the main CE is a gut CE, that counts it as a Nero fest. But whatever. I'm digressing with my old man stuff. Uh, in terms of the Gotcha Craft essences, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be Apex, Road to Star, and Muscle Bullet. Um, with Apex giving a Buster plus 8%, plus 10%, um, eight, well, probably one limit broken. Start battle with 40% NP, overcharges MP by two stages, one time. Road to Star, which is gain 10 crit stars upon entering the battle, it gives you 12. Art plus 3%, um, crit damage uh, plus 5%. And gives you uh, silver drops, and then there's missile bullet, which is Buster crit damage up 25%, and it drops the bronze material, and then the event craft essences, which is com uh, common commentator of flowers, which is MP gain plus 15%, MP damage plus 5%, gain three uh, stars per turn, maximum break four stars. This will drop the lotto material, I believe. Yes, the, really, this is the one that drops the lotto material. That's a little bit, huh? Count Stretch, which is one time revive of 1 HP, Arts Performance plus 8%, Max Limit Break In, and then the Event Damage Bonus is plus 100%. If you Max Limit Break It, it's 200%, and this is what you will likely be using for any challenge quest, and for some, probably grinding as well. Uh, and then the Event Command Codes are going to be Lady Justice, which is an engraved card, Star Absorption plus 100%. When attacking with the engraved card, gain 2 crit stars. Dragon Fang akin to the Light of the Lake, which is the 4 star com uh, command code. Engraved card gives critical damage plus 10%. And when attacking with the engraved card, uh, gain two crit stars. And then there's Heal Princess attacking with the engraved card, drains 100 HP from the target, inflicts curse status on them, 300 damage over three turns, and that is the three star event command code. So you'll be able to get at least the event craft essences and the event command codes just by playing the events. And for the gotcha craft essences, you will have to summon on the banner. Uh, in terms of the main quest, this is just the story stuff. Beat Al Laval and Lafay and you can do it. In terms of the free quest, it's similarly structured to like Nero Fest, where it's three um, three checkpoints, I guess in this case. And on them are going to be a whole bunch of grind materials, so make sure to actually do them because they will drop browns apples and they will change up who you're fighting and stuff like that. So uh, if you're doing on the, if you're paying attention to your friends list, make sure to update the CEs if it's required here. To get the maximum most of it on day seven the the higher the highest fight here looking like 
it's going to be archer focused on here it's looking like it's going to be saber focused and on the third checkpoint i can only assume it's going to be rider no it's also archer it is also archer focused which is interesting so there you go easy enough because you have to do fluky stuff obviously the 90 plus plus one is going to be extremely hard but it shouldn't be that hard to actually manage the grind of it the regular one yeah there should be a version of it like right here where uh, obviously if you want all the material they'll have these kind of funky style ones but if you don't they'll have these style ones and these are always pretty simple to actually grind and it's not too bad if you're a newer player <laughs> so you don't have to feel too beholden to trying to grind with this one but at the same time they are giving the 100 percent damage to e so maybe that can also help with some newer players it did help me back when i started back in the day but anyway there'll also be exhibition quests what are exhibition quests these are like very hard fights that this is why you would need this if you're wondering why would you ever need a ce that gives you 200 percent uh 200 percent damage increase it's because these uh challenge quests are a real fucker i'm not going to be going over them because i like to keep these a secret to me but just know that if you do beat them, you will get a single ticket and a lung and some usual five materials from it. So it's usually worth trying to see if you can do it. But at the same time, these events are extremely tough. As you can see here, Lee has 400,000 HP in the first uh, the first go around, then 700,000, and then 1 million. So and they only get, some of them are harder or easier depending on the gimmick that they have. Um... And the last one is always a real pain in the ass. So I'm going to be saving these for when I do them with my brother so we can actually have a uh, interesting time. And the other thing to keep in track of with the exhibition quest is that you're not allowed to use identical servants. So no double Castoria or double Merlin. And there's no full party revive. I believe you can still use your command seals to force a HP increase, MP increase. And what is the last one that usually happens? There's three of them that you can do. No, and then it's the full, the full revive is the one you can't do. And there you go. In the shop itself, there'll be the drops. There's going to be Serenos plushies, which comes from the lottery. Morgan medals of gold, silver, and copper. In terms of the Serenos plushies, what you can get from there are the command seals. And then you can also get the, the code openers for quick arts and buster, along with the uh, code remover and a crystallized lore. And then after you get everything from there, you can start exchanging them for QP. In terms of the gold Morgan medals, to get everything in the shop, you'll need 3,600 in total. You, here you'll find two of the CEs, which I believe this one is the the Lotto Grind one, correct? Uh, two of those, you'll be able to get a bunch of uh, Saber Monuments, Archer Monuments, Lancer Monument, uh, Monuments, Berserker Monuments, and then uh, Spirit Roots, Lamp of the Demon Ceiling, Phoenix Plum... Uh, scales of fantasies uh, two gold foes for I believe it this one is HP it is why don't you tell me what it does right here? uh why, why are they doing like this okay yeah uh, attack is the one with the forward facing one and I always forget which one is which I because I always use them always at the same time you can get two of the attack ones right here and then in silver it's one of the CE over there, Commentary of Flowers. Silver versions of Saber, Archer, Lancer, and Berserker. Uh, you can get Heart of the Foreign God, Rainbow Yarn, Medal of Great Knight, Idrisil Seed, one for Attack Foe, Golden Foe, and then a Crystallized Lore. And to get the total of the Morgan Medals in Silver, it's 2,800. And then for Copper, it's 2,500, which is not a lot. Um, which you can get the commentary of flowers, you can get four in total from here, along with uh, Octopulate Twin Crystals, the Giant's Ring, um, Unforgettable Ashes, Attack and HP uh, Silver Foes, and then a single Golden Foe for Attack and a Crystallized Lore. And if you're wondering, that's not a lot of stuff in the shop, it's because everything is here in the Lotto. So in the Lotto itself, um, if you don't, if you've never done a Lotto event, I'll try and explain it to you as easy as I can. Lotto events are the greatest way to actually get up and running for a lot of accounts. The reason is, is that basically in the event, you'll be grinding and you'll be dropping these lotto tickets, and then you'll be able to enter boxes that have basically infinite material. For the first 11 boxes, the grand prize inside of them, as you can see here, for example, is the count stretch. This is the CE with the damage percentage on it. Um, 
And then on the sixth one, it's a crystallized lore. And then from seven to ten, it is the HP golden foes. You ha you aren't allowed. You you can only. Ugh, this is such a weird mechanic that they have in there. But basically, for these first ten, let's say you're grinding through the event and you don't have very much time for it. After you get the grand prize, you're allowed to skip over the box and start the next one. But then from the eleventh onward, you have to get absolutely everything inside of the box, and you can do this infinite. You can never stop. What stops you is that you run out of stamina. What stops you is that your will breaks. What stops you is that eventually you get tired of it. Um, that is the only thing that stops you, the lotto grind. The lotto grind, for example, um, not for example. The lotto grind is the greatest way to kind of get up, to, up and running because I'll see down here. Here's the materials inside of it. So if you do the lotto for the first 10, uh, up for the first 10 with the grand prizes in them, You'll get the, there's the count stretch CE, but this one actually ends after the fifth one. You'll get four Cyrano's plushes are inside all of them. The Aurora Steel, two Aurora Steels, two Homunculus Babies, three Stinger of Certain Death, three Heroes Proof, three Stakes, uh, one Gem for Saber, Archer, Lancer, Rider, Caster, Assassin, Berserker, and the same is true for Red Gems and Blue Gems. And then you'll get 25 4 XP, 15 3 XP, a single Golden Apple, two Silver Apples, three copper apples, 45 mana prisms, and 10, uh, 10k friend points, and also 4.45 million QP are inside the boxes. And after you reach the final point where you get to 11 and onwards, and it and it basically goes to the infinite, it's basically the same except for the golden apples are now gone. Gold and silver apples are gone, but the copper apples will stay. And you get, like I think, a little bit more QP. That's the basic change they do here. Um... And you can just do this infinitely. It's best to do this when you need the materials that are inside it. Inside it. For example, I need the heroes proofs, and I need—I mean, I always need stakes. That's the main thing I'm doing in here, though, because I need heroes proofs. And I need a fuck ton of heroes proofs because if you don't know, heroes proofs are annoying as hell to grind, and they use a lot of them. For Saber herself, 161. Even for the three stars, kills the Ray of Saber. He needs 105. You will quickly run out of Heroes Proofs if you try and level up the skills of a single unit that uses Heroes Proofs. It is absolutely insane what happens to you. Um, so I'm obviously out because I had to level up my Kentoki. And I obviously need more because I plan to have other units with Heroes Proofs in it. So uh, the other reason why it's so good is because it's an easy way to get a lot of QP and a lot of EXP. So if you're someone who is like, man, I need to really get my box up and running because they give you 3x St. Quartz for each one of them. This is your time to get through them all and get through it all. Um, Lotto Grind. Obviously, don't feel the, if you don't feel the need to grind all of it, you shouldn't do it. Um, it can be a little bit weird because a lot of the times I feel like when people do Lotto Grinds, they might push themselves beyond the point of actually enjoying it and then they start hating the game. Um, obviously, stop. If you don't want to do it, it's fine. But it is the best way of kind of getting your stuff up and running for it. And if you do it once, if you have like one really good session of it, usually it's enough for you to go like, all right, I think I'm, I'm good for the time being. Like one good session of these here. I did this, um, I think one time I grinded this maybe to at least, mm, no, past 100 lotto boxes easy. I think maybe 200. And I've only now, years later, started to get low on gems. And I need to go back up there and get my gem count back up. So it's very good to actually do the lotto and get used to it. And like I said, the first 10, if you're in a crunch of it, you can skip them. I don't do that anymore. In the beginning, when I was a newer player, player, I did. I made sure to get everything that is good here, which is the golden apples, the silver apples, the copper apples. Um, and then once I got the CE or the grand prize, I would skip and move to the next box. I just don't do that anymore. But that's because I'm already committed to saying... No, nah, I'm about to grind this to an insane degree. And also from the 11 box onward, you can roll 100 at a time. That didn't exist back when I started playing. It used to be that you had to do it really super fucking slow every single time. Um, which is another reason why a lot of people also kind of get burnt out on Lotto Grind. But anyway, that's the Lotto for this season. There is also going to be another Lotto a little bit later on, which is going to be Christmas time. Which you can see right here, with the Christmas Lotto. But I believe this one... If I remember correctly, it has a limit on him for this year because this is technically a rerun, so I think there's actually not much. Yeah, see, you can see here. Uh, during Christmas, it has a Lotto Grind too, but on Christmas, if it's a rerun, you have to basically get it all set up again. 
um, they don't allow you to go all of it. So this one actually only has 20 or so, which is a shame because these also have like the really cool SP boxes, which also has a lot of real cool stuff. But they decided not only is there no new Christmas event this year, also the one Christmas event that we get is still a rerun. And yeah, you can't keep lotto grinding. So great on them. So get your lotto grinding in for this one while you can. So anyway, that's the Fairy Night Cup. And now we can finally talk about the summoning campaign. So there's actually three summoning campaigns. The first one, which is the one that is gonna debut when the event comes out, features Britomart, Bardigist, and Babosif. And then when there is gonna be one that features Charlemagne, Bradamante, and Roland. And then there's a one that will feature Brynhilde, Sigurd, uh, Sakata, Kintoki, Krimild, Siegfried, and Heracles. And those will come afterwards, but the main focus one will be Brittle Martin. This is the one that we'll be focusing on. And like I said earlier in the video, this is the one that has the gotcha stuff in here. So all of them will be shared for that. Uh, in terms of if these are actually good, I forgot to actually say that or not. They seem perfectly fine to me. Apex seems like it might be good in some in some cases. Uh, though I am a little bit curious that the Grind CE this year does not actually have... Um, an MP cost to it. That's kind of crazy, but okay. We will make do. That should make for interesting grinding, at least. Anyway, enough clicking around. Let's get into it, and I will actually be going over the four stars, uh, because these are actually limited ones, and they're also popular ones, and they're also good. So, let's go. Babo Sif. We're gonna start with her, because she's the one... Um, I don't want to say anything. Um, I also know that I'm saying her name wrong. I call her... Bob it's either Trico or Babo Sif, because I'm calling her after Babo Frick from the star... Star Wars movie. That's why I keep calling her that. And if it's not that, it's Trico. So <laughs> pick your poison of, of, of words of names that are not right to say or buy. But anyway, Babu Sif over here. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster, four hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. Her first skill is the Grimalkin A. Increases his own quick performance for three turns. Grants self invincibility for one turn. Grants party evasion for one attack. 500% chance to deal 500 damage without killing the party except for self. The quick increase is 40% and the cooldown is 6. Her second skill is the Blessed Scion EX. Seals all enemies MP for one turn, seals their skills for one turn, charges on MP gauge and that is a 30% MP gauge on cooldown of 6. Her third skill is Va Fey Vampirism. Absorbs one enemy's HP without killing, chance to reduce their MP gauge by 1 and then charges on MP gauge. The a HP absorb is 3000, the drain chance is 100% at level 10 and then the MP increase is 30% on a cooldown of 6. Her three passive skills are Magic Resistance EX, Writing A, and Territory Creation A. Her third append skill is an Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm, uh, which is going to be this version here, because she got a strength in pretty recently on the JP version of the game. But this is the way it's going to look like for us for the next two years. Um, is Fetch Falnut, the Lamentasia of Fantation, Rank E, Quick Noble Phantasm, that is Anti-Army. It hits six times. It ignores evasion for a single turn, then deals damage to them, and then inflicts curse status with 1000 damage for 5 turns to them. At MP level 1, it's 1200, and if you get her all the way to MP5, it's 2000. Overcharge effect is inflicting evil curse status for 5 turns to 1 enemy, which is an increase of curse damage on them. At level 1, it's 200%, and at level 5, it's 400%, and after, if you want to see what her buff is, it is an inflict curse status by 1000 for 5 turns to 1 enemy. This activates first. Because apparently this was not an activate first ability beforehand, which is a big deal. Uh, then deals damage to them, deals 100% plus 10% and extra damage against enemies with the curse status. One enemy curse stack counts max 10, uh, 10 stacks. And then also inflicts evil curse stats for tur 5 turns for them, activates first, and then increases curse damage on them. So, a uh, really good buff actually. But anyway, that's uh, Bobo, Bobo Stiff over here. Bobo Sith. I had to, the name is changing every single time. Um, Tamlin Tristan, the best way of saying it. No, Trico. So Trico is actually very good. She is, if you did the most recent grind node, it was possible to actually, um, with the Black Rail and a decent amount of MP levels in her, to be able to grind it with Morgan, with her taking care of the first enemy, Morgan taking care of the second, uh, the second wave, and then her taking care of the last one kind of by herself. She's an extremely good, solid, single-target archer for quick. Um, I don't really have that many neg- I actually don't know why. It must have been a thing of, like, maybe her just power went down a little bit, but I don't know why they buffed her on JP. 
other than like she's very popular and people would love to see her buffed i that's obvious why you would buff her for that reason but she seemed like she was already good but maybe in jp the power creep is just so that she just needed more now to be better that's possible um but just looking at her kit and actually using her over time she's very strong <laughs> she's very good the worst that you could say about her is that maybe it looks a little bit boring but honestly when you increase your own quick performance by 40 percent and then give yourself an invincibility and then give the party evasion like that's fine simple is perfectly fine to me i don't i don't i don't see a single issue with what she does she seems solid she's really good you can use her in a bunch of different situations that i can see the only thing that i could see as a negative is that sometimes there's some enemies that will have resistance to curse so you won't be able to actually hit them with the curse so maybe that's something but yeah she's very good if you have any specifics to say like hey if you played the jp version of the game and you were feeling that she was actually lacking in damage feel free to tell me but again um from my own experience with her i've never had a negative experience using her she's always just been this is a very good unit this is a very dumbly built unit <laughs> this is a very good unit so there you go and she's also like i said limited uh or story locked which is like limited with extra steps um, where you have to have completed Avalon Le Fay, but it's okay because a lot of the units with uh, characters that people like, she will show up in it. Mine is MP maybe 4, and that's because they keep putting her with fucking Bargus, and I want more Bargus copies, and I don't want more copies of her, because it's a pain in the ass to try and get a level 120 4 star, and unfortunately they're always together because they come from the same Lost Belt, and that's very annoying for me. So let's talk about Bargus. Who is next? Easy transition here, who is another story lock servant hide, hidden behind Avalon Le Fay. But here she is, Bardigist. She is one quick, one arts, three buster. Five hits on the quick, three hits on the arts, two hits on buster, and five hits uh, extra. Her first skill is the numeral of Saint B, increases on party's attack by 18% for three turns, and then increases on buster performance when you're on the sunlight battlefield for three turns. If you're on the sunlight, uh, if you're on, if you're in the sunlight, the buster increases 28%. On a cooldown of 5, her second skill is Wild Rule A, increases Buster performance for 3 turns, grants self survival of the fittest buff for 3 turns, survival of the fittest recovers own HP by 1000 when normal attacking, removes one latest buff from an enemy with normal attacking, if successfully removed, the buff 500% chance to reduce their defense by 10% for 3 turns, the Buster increases 30% and the cooldown is 6, her third skill is the Foul Weather A, reduces party's damage attack for 3 attacks 3 turns, grants self uh, regeneration buff for 3 turns, Charges party's MP gauge every turn for 3 turns, the damage taken is 1000, the MP increase is 15% and the cooldown is 7. Her passive skill is Magic Resistance C, Madness Enhancement A+, and her pen skill for the third is an Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude. And then her Noble Phantasm is the Black Dog Galatine, or the Horn of the Devouring Sun. Rank A, Buster, Anti-Army, hits 5 times. Deals damage to all enemy, increases H, um, increases own max HP by 3,000 for three turn for five turns, reduces own skill cooldowns by one. The damage at level one is 300%, and if you get her all the way to MP level five, it's 500%. And then she increases her own Buster performance for one turn, activates first, and it's 20% at level one. And if you get her all the way to the final level, it's 40%. And I forgot to mention this with Sif. In general, when a buff activates first, it's very good. With Sif, it probably didn't really matter with the way the Noble Phantasm worked originally, but the way it worked afterwards, it 100% needed to apply all the stuff that she was going to do first before anything else. And if you, before you say like, hey, is there units out there who increases their uh, buster performance after they do the attack? Yes. <laughs> they do exist, and it's very sad. That's what Melt, I think, does currently, if I remember right. No, Melt, I think, rem removes the buffs after she finishes her attack. Which is what she got a buff on the JP version of the game that made her insane because now that activates first. But anyway, uh, Bardigus. Bardigus is very good at surviving. Um, she's not a typical AoE unit that you would use for looping because obviously she doesn't have the 30% that you can gain back from using the skill again. Um, so in general, you wouldn't really use her for anything looping related at all just because she isn't very good for that. But if you're ever in a situation where you're like in a challenging fight, there is literally a video up on my channel where we only won it thanks to Bargus, where Bargus' skills of her being able to grant herself, give, give the party reducing damage, being able to regenerate, being able to increase her HP after her Noble Phantasm, removing her skill cooldown by one, um, this skill here which let her buff herself and then also remove the enemy buffs and then also deal more damage afterwards, 
everything about it is very solid. If there was anything negative, I would, I would say is that there's no way for her to call out the sunlight battlefield itself. So if you're ever on a battlefield that has no sunlight in it, this is this ability is just give yourself 18% attack increase, which is awful. It is god awful. It's terrible if you are not on the sunlight battlefield. It's still not great if you're on the sunlight battlefield, but at least it makes a little bit more sense. Um, your buff ends up being much stronger in that case, and you don't have to suffer for it at all. It's it, but it's a pretty decent loss of power if you are not there like fully together it is um 46 percent increase and then you lose 28 percent of that if you're like it's it's if it's evening outside it's terrible it's very bad so that's the only negative that i really had to say about her but in terms of everything else i think she's fantastic at it if you are in a specific challenge quest or you are in a um grail war grail war specifically oh she's amazing i love using her in grail war especially because mine's like level 100 <laughs> Um, Barkus ends up being very good for that. And for a 4 star, that's very, that's very nice. And it does, being a 4 star actually does help a little bit. Just because it means that your cost is down just a little bit. So if you invest in her enough, that'd be great. I would love it if mine was MP5. But like I said, because I want her so bad and the game can feel it, they don't want to give me her. They give me, uh, Babo Frick instead. They don't want to give me this so sad so unbelievably sad <laughs> she's great i love her and you can tell from my inc incredibly unbiased view on her so let's go on to the final unit so both of these both of these are really good four stars i i, I would understand and also they're fan favorites if that's not obvious enough a lot of the units in lost belt 6 are fan favorites so sometimes them being on a banner is enough but at the same time if you summon all the light of banners featuring them you're going to have a lot of them. <laughs> you're going to have a lot of them. It's great for new players because you never have to worry about like, oh man, what if I can't find Bargus or Bubbo Sif? They'll come back. Don't worry about it. They will always keep going back. Similar to when I did my Morgan video and I said, man, she hasn't come up on JP this year. They literally announced it. They were like, oh man, we forgot to release our yearly Morgan banner. They'll find a way to come back. And anyway, the last unit who was another limited unit servant, not story locked, is Brito Mart. She's a Lancer. She has two quicks, one arts, two buster, four hits on quick, three hits on arts, and three hits on buster on a five hit extra. Her first skill is the Fortress Angela, a Queen's Citadel Wave Sail Wave Mail C Plus. Grants self invincibility for two attacks, three turns, increases own MP generation rate for three turns, increases own critical attack chance resistance for three turns, 30% to MP rate, and then to critical chance resistance it's 30% on the cooldown of six. Her second skill is the virtue of chastity A. <laughs> It's a very funny skill name to give to her. Gain critical stars. Gain critical stars every turn for three turns. Grant self a debuff immunity for three turns. And then increase crit damage for three turns. Ten crits. Uh, star regen is ten. And the crit damage increase is 30%. And this is on a cooldown of six. Her third skill is the Fairy Knight Fairy Kingdom C. Which is an increase to quick and buster performance for three turns. And then charges on MP gauge. The quick and buster improvements are 30%. And the MP increase is 30%. And this is on a cooldown of six. Her passive skills include Magic Resistance B+, and that's it. They didn't feel the need to give her any more. Her append skills an Anti-Avenger Attack Damage Aptitude, and then her Noble Phantasm is the Penetrate Bladud Fairy Knight Tempest Warcry. It's a quick Noble Phantasm that is rank B, that is anti-unit slash anti-army. It hits six times, uh, ignores invincibility for one turn, disactivates first, and then increases own damage against the writing enemies by 50% for one turn, disactivates first, deals damage to all enemies, and it's 600% in MP level 1. If you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1,000. And then her overcharge effect is deal extra damage against rider enemies, which is 150% extra to riders at charge level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, 200% extra damage against rider enemies. And that is Brito Mart. And man, she's she would be fantastic at killing riders if she was an assassin and not a lancer. <laughs> What an extremely silly thing to give <laughs> to, to give a lancer. Um, okay, let's let's start with some bullet points. One is Brittle Mark cool? Yes. Do I want Brittle Mark? That is also a yes. Is Brittle Mark good? In theory, yeah. Um, 
some things that I actually like that she has is that she really saw she really blends well with the new Summer Scotty because she is both quick and buster oriented, which seems to be the uh, MO going forward for a lot of quick units to better be used with Summer Scotty. So she also has two quicks and two busters to go along with it, which is fantastic. She has a way to give herself MP generation rate up, which is very important when it comes to quick units if they are not doing enough attack. Um, the ability here that it the, the fact that she has six hits is also very solid the more hits on a quick unit the better because that means more chances of you getting more mp back and a lot of quick units can suffer very deeply from not being able to get back um mp gain quick enough because they only hit like three times and it's not enough for them uh the negatives here she has no way outside of this one ability uh, which is 30% to quick. There's not actually that much buffs to quick, so she is incredibly, inc incredibly relied on Summer Scotty to do a lot of her damage was for her. Uh, without Summer Scotty, she's not going to be doing very much. Her entire Noble Phantasm kit is designed to fight against riding enemies. Um, and if you want to look up how many rider archers are in the game, it is... At the moment of this release of this video, how many archers have writing? It is Billy the Kid, Altera Santa, Calamity Jane, Babo Sith, Zenobia, and Durga, and that's it. This 50% increase will help you against exactly those archer enemies that have writing in them. Um, if you want to know what they're talking about with writing, and it, the, the, there's a difference between writing and writer. Writing is this skill right here. So, obviously, a lot of the writers have writing. Like, look at all these writers that have writing. It's insane how many of them have them. Almost all of them have it. Um, though I think not every writer has writing, now that I think about it. <laughs> if, if, you, <laughs> if you look at these right here, some of the writers are actually missing from here. But that's beside the point, and if we go silly way of how skills work. The point is, this would do gangbusters if this was on a unit that was actually d dealing bonus damage against writers. But she doesn't. She do the 150% and the 50% on some units should really help her take down riders. But you're using a lancer to take down a rider at that point, and especially one that is also quick related. You kind of want to get that extra damage in from. That's my one concern with her. Is I feel like even if you were to use her against riders, it wouldn't be enough. Like you would miss out on a lot of stuff here, and that's kind of a bummer on it. I kind of wish that they would buff this noble phantasm to make her. I don't know better maybe better at dealing with lancers or maybe she can turn lancers into riders it's kind it, i don't feel like i'm calling it out of the line to say that an entire overcharge effect that is dedicated to fighting against riders is on a lancer unit and to be fair this is specific ability is on other type of servants like for example um uh, she has it serious heroin x has this i believe where she deals bonus damage against artoria faces and she deals 150%, which is okay. Not every Artoria is going to be um, the right the right thing to fight against an assassin, which is fair, and which is also why they've gone out of their way to really buff her a whole bunch to help her out with the fact that okay, maybe this maybe maybe making <laughs> this assassin is very good for her flavor wise, but in terms of actual practicality in the game, unless you were fighting against specifically a berserker or a writer Artoria you would not end up using her a whole bunch against a lot of them. But maybe that's just my case. I don't know. I don't want to be too hard on Brittle Mart because I actually do plan to summon on her. And I, my brother obviously plans to summon on her because he did an entire Binding of Isaac video where thanks to me not playing enough Binding of Isaac, he, uh, he, no, yes, because you didn't unlock Blue Baby. Well, because you didn't have him unlocked. Exactly. Did, did, so are you, I, I'm just so saying. It is my fault. That's what I was saying. It is, uh, that's what I was. I was about to take the fault because I did not unlock Blue Baby, and you practiced with Blue Baby. You said me. No, I said because of the mistake of me not playing enough Binding of Isaac, and I didn't unlock Blue Baby. If you had waited five seconds, did not jump down my fucking throat. <laughs> as I, I heard slander on my Blue Baby. I go. I can defend them. All right. Yeah, just to make it clear, this is, this is real stakes here. Obviously, we plan to do summons for Brittle Mart, and this is the last unit that I want for this year, because I, I think Brittle Mart's just kind of cool looking. This is true when she was revealed on JP. I was like, man, this armor design is awesome. And then when you don't have her on the armor, that's also awesome. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here. You can really tell that the artist behind it, which is uh, the same artist behind Helena, 
she was finally overjoyed <laughs> to be able to draw an adult type woman because if you've ever seen helena's original concept art where she was um a little bit older she looks a little bit similar in body type to brittle mart so you can tell that they really do they were really looking forward to drawing a type of character like this so regardless of how i feel about them which is like i'm really unsure of how actually good they are in terms of a lancer uh, especially when there's so many other good lancers especially when you have like Melusane coming out, um, who's absolutely insane in terms of a Lancer goes. Even though they don't share the same type, it's kind of hard to compare them, right? Um, the only thing that she has going for her is that if you were ever specifically fighting against a writer, she's going to do amazing. And then she actually does have some very nice like defensive skills, so you could even use her in a kind of like um, uh, a challenge quest type scenario because you know that she'd be able to give herself some invincibility. And then also increase her critical attack chance resistance, which can actually come in handy pretty nicely. Uh, this ability to grant, self, uh, grant yourself a debuff immunity can also come in pretty clutch in a lot of fights. Like, there's been times where I was able to win fights just because I had to beat debuff immunity thanks to Songzong giving it to the party. And I didn't realize that was a reason why I was doing so good. Um, so yeah, but my current feeling is, is that if you want her, obviously you're going to be summoning for her. Which is what me and my brother are going to be doing. Um, but if you're someone who's like, I don't give a fuck about Brittle Mart, is this actually a good unit? I think she's probably an okay unit. And you're probably good to skip on this one and continue to save for some of the bigger ones. Because it's a really rough time right now. Morgan just came out. Um, C Castoria is going to be coming out real soon. A lot of people probably don't talk about her as much as a lot of the other ones because she's obviously not on the same tier. But I still think she's really good. Da Vinci's coming out as well. We have a bunch of like, like I said, Melusane, we have Oberon, we have Muramasa, we have Koyanskaya. I'm able to summon on Brittle Mart because I have a lot of the big units such as Melusane, Koyanskaya, I have Morgan, I have Castoria. I can throw a multi at, uh, at Brittle Mart and be perfectly happy with it and then save enough knowing like, but this is like a three multis and then that's it. And then I'm back to summoning, I'm back to waiting for Cuckoo. That's like this kind of unit for me where I'm like, I want them but not enough to justify compared to a lot of the other heavy hitters who I maybe want more out there. And maybe this is a unit that I'll always gladly add to my um, GSSR poll, like the one that comes for anniversary where you can select like a selected GSSR or maybe a banner featuring them. That's possible for me, but you know, that's how I, I, I view it at the moment. And that's the end of this video, everyone. This ended up being really, 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 really long. But it's okay, because it's been a while since I've done the FGO video, so these usually go very long. So thank you very much if you go, you saved all the way to the end. As always, feel free to tell me how you feel about Brittle Mart, how you're going to be summoning. I know there's some people that are definitely going to be summoning, and I'll gladly see you on the battlefield, and I wish you both of us the best of luck. But if for the people who are saving, <laughs> best of luck saving. For the ones ready to prepare for the lotto, Start getting ready now, buddy, because you're going to need everything possible to you to get as much of it done as you can. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until next time, everyone, you guys have a good day. And I'll say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Peace out.